I saw a gif that reminded me of uh, How to Use a Guy in 10 Days. And it's just, and I love that movie as well. And it's um, Ma um, Matthew McConaughey just nuzzling against Kate Hudson. It's yes. weird, just nuzzling <laughs> against her. And it's just like this moment of like a man being this arm enough to snuggle to a woman. And I feel like, I feel like there's a lot of, sorry? Oh, sorry, I thought someone said something. Yeah, someone, someone was moved by that. <laughs> I think that, like, there's a lot of discourse online about, like, you know, like, this Puritan age of, like, people not wanting sex scenes. For me, it's, sex scenes are fine to me, but it's like, don't have a sex scene and not have the, like, the little intimate stuff that kind of lead to that. That, for me, is where the, the richness of desire lies. Absolutely, yeah, I totally agree. You know what's funny, aside, but Dermot Mulroney also gets the ring stuck in, um, What's that one that's kind of Christmassy? The Christmassy film of um, Dermot Mulroney. The yeah. Family Stone. Oh, The Family Stone, yeah. So weird. Yeah. That's ring yeah, stuff. That's that thing. Anyway. Claire Danes, yeah. Anyway, I love that. It's a Christmas. Christmas is coming. I'm going to be watching that one. Um, but yeah, speaking of which, you're a pop culture maven, a rom connoisseur. Um, and so I thought I'd look, we should look at some other cultural landmarks coming from your esteemed knowledge. I'd love you to pick one song, one film, and one book for us that resonate as the epitome of romance. Oh, I could never choose you. the epitome. That's, no. that's big. But I could choose stuff well, that well, I like. Just one that comes to mind. I mean, obviously, we could start with the song. R&B runs a lot through your yeah. writing. I'm guessing it's not Thong, thong Song. It's not Thong um, Song. Even though, if you know, you know. Uh, thong Song's up there. Thong Song's up there. I mean, singing that passionately about thongs, exactly. it's, it's up there. <laughs> Um, uh, it's actually in the book, um, Nothing Even Matters, uh, Lauren Hill and D'Angelo. Yes. Mm. There's such, I, it's, how can a song have chemistry? But yes. that song has so much chemistry. There's interaction between them. There's a bit where um, uh, D'Angelo says, I sometimes have a tendency to look at you religiously, and Lauren chuckles. Woof! Mm. That chuckle, that mm -hmm. coyness, that flirtation, it's everything to me. And also, I love that he says that, like that yes. awe. That like you know, God, you're so amazing. I mm -hmm. I love that song. That song's everything to me, and that's that song is very like Malachi and Kiki. Yes. Um, movie. Oof, there's so like where there's yeah. so many movies. It's hot. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna choose two because they're like there's kind of the same theme, which is when Harry met Sally. Yes. Oof, love that movie. Um, it's a best friend movie, and I just love their individual growth and the fact that, like, listen, they're flawed people. They are not very, okay. they're not like great people, but they're so right for each other. Mm -hmm. And um, I just enjoy that kind of that friendship that forms their romance and informs their romance. And I really love Brown Sugar. It's like a hug to me. Um, they have amazing chemistry, Sana Lathan and um, Tay Diggs, and it's the. Um, as a writer, I love the bit where like there's that they're, they're just having a casual conversation and he just casually quotes something that she wrote. And yes. it's just like he is he's not trying to impress her. He's just so in tune with the tapestry of her soul that he's just like, I'm just gonna this is I wanna know everything about you and obviously I'm gonna read it, even and her man had not read it. So um yeah, I love that movie so much. And for me, I watched that when I was 12, 13. I think that was like the first I mean, apart from coming to America, which I don't know if it's a rom com mm. on the line, um, but I think it was the first black rom com that I wrote or maybe yeah. read, watched, or like I was allowed to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, formative. For, 100% formative. I loved it. I loved it. And I think still to this day, everything I write is has that in mind. Um, is, that, is, that, is that it? And a book. And a book. Oh, I'm going to think of like the last romance that I adored. Um, and I read a lot, as you can imagine, but I'm going to say Seven Days in June. Yes. Love that. Gorgeous. Yeah. Check out Tia Williams if you haven't already. Um, I uh, noticed that we are five past eight. I forget what time we're meant to wrap up, but I'm sure someone will tell me. But if you guys have any questions, do um, start thinking of them. Don't be shy. Don't feel like, oh, I'm going to wait for someone else. Please do think. Um, but, yeah, I, I kind of want to ask you about where you see depictions of black love going next, especially in the UK. What can we do to foster more of this storytelling 
And do you think there's been an evolution in what we see depicted either here or in the States or elsewhere? Hmm. Um, I feel like we need more people like you. That's number one, hundred mm. percent. Because it's like uh, we just need people within publishing <laughs> to pick up our stories, frankly. Because uh, yeah, that's it. And more uh, black agents as well. I think it's really important. Um, yeah, I think it's really like the people like I don't like to say behind the scenes because they are the scene, to be honest with you. But like it's that she uh, like truly. Um, and in terms of TV, hmm. but can you think of examples of film or TV that you thought, yeah, the the depictions of love, love between black characters or a black character and someone else have kind of. Um, I mean, Insecure always comes to mind. Insecure is yeah. I was trying to think of Black British, but like yeah. Insecure. I mean, I'm rewatching right now. Mm. I love that show. It's, I think it's like literally top five for me because yeah. of exactly what I said. She's so messy. True. She's so messy, bad decisions all around. Mm. But also, there's a heart in it. She's not a bad person. And also, Lawrence is messy too. Exactly. Like, so, um, it's black people in love and they're fallible, but they're good. And they're just trying to make it. And also, it's imbued with like the romance of friendship, which, which is in Honey and Spice, but yeah. it's also so important to me and goes alongside kind of the, the, the traditional romance. Um, so, yeah, definitely, definitely insecure. Um, I recently watched uh, Dream Wild Black and I really love the romance that was portrayed yes. in there as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's still a long way to go. and a dearth of these stories, particularly in the UK, but hopefully you'll be addressing that with your own writing, absolutely. <laughs> um, I mean, I guess speaking of which, besides the Honey and Spice sequel, are you able to give us a hint of what you're working on next, um, or just in a very general yeah, so, sense? Yeah, so Sun on the Skin, I'm working on various TV projects, uh, a movie and two TV projects. Um, I'm not sure I'm allowed to talk about yeah, them in detail, but, but, it'll be but in, it was in what you can expect, space. romance, yeah, I yeah. love romance. Brilliant, and with that thread of friendship there, as you say, I mean, that is like a, goes hand in hand with romantic stories of kind of a non-platonic mm -hmm. nature, um, and you nail that so well. So does anybody, we've got 10 minutes left, and I'd love to be able to get some of your stories. I can't see your faces, but yeah, I can see. if anyone wants to shout out a question oh, for Polly, okay. please. Hi. Hello. Um, first of all, I love the song Color. I literally like, got to like the end and I didn't want to end it. It was like a tasty like, I think we can, that's nice. And, um, I think they're handing you a mic. Oh, cool. Can you all hear me though? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll use a mic because, you know. Um, but no, I love loving Color. Um, and I just, yeah, I was just saying how it was a tasty meal and I didn't want it to end, so I just like kept like holding it off and going, okay, you have to end this work, like it's just not fair, it was so good. And your writing is so beautiful and eloquent and all the things. Um, I wanted to ask you about, you spoke about direction on the page, especially for TV. I wondered how much influence you had on the casting process then, because obviously you had another director kind of directing. So in terms of like My Big Age, I think you had Ron Kay in it age, as yeah. your lead. Oh yeah. Um, how did, yeah, how was that for you? What was that process oh, like? Yeah, I, it's my show. So I, I, I'm, I'm the creator, but also that was in everything I do, I'm the exec producer. So, and I did that because I want to have control, I'm a control freak. And I think that comes from writing novels and, write, and being, you know, writing my own stories. Like for me, it's the same thing, this is my baby. So casting for me is is unthinkable that like I I would create a character and I would not have a say in who plays them. Um, and Ron Kay and I have known each other for years and she auditioned. Thank God she nailed it. I was like, girl, you you're like my sister. And if you mess up this audition, it'll be really awkward for both of us. But she she killed it. She smashed it. Um, she's inc she's a phenomenal phenomenal actress. Um, but yeah, I just wanted somebody who would embody the spirit of like Sade and Big Age, and, and she did it. But yeah, I'm in control of. Like, uh, yeah, all of the all of the casting. I'm I'm literally sat in the audition room, and I watch all the tapes. <laughs> Does anyone else have a question for Pauline? 
Thank you, Sharon. Yes, good evening. Yeah, um, it's the first I'm knowing you. I haven't read any of your books. I'm thinking of getting one of them this evening. Only thinking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, the question I have is, um, when you decide to write a book and you have chosen a, a topic, um, or what spikes you up? What keeps you going? Because you know there's, there's what they call... Um, Writer's block. Mm. And how do you avoid writer's block mm. and to continue going yeah. to the end? Yeah, when I find out, I'll let you know. It's tough, mm. it's tough, it's tough, it's tough. Um, I have a vision of the story that I want to tell. And it's obviously, it does get really hard. And I do have a writer's block. Um, there's a couple of things. First of all, I remind myself of the story that I'm trying to tell and why I'm doing this. But also, I go back to the things that inspire me. Like, I go back to Brown Sugar, I go back to When Harry Met Sally, I read the books that inspire me, and I get that fire in my belly. Or I read a really, really good book, and I get jealous. And I'm like, no, 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 I want to put my voice out there too. I, you kind of need that. It's almost like, you know how rappers are inherently competitive, and it's not necessarily, they have to believe that they're the best. And it's not necessarily that they are the best, but it's that spirit of like, I need to, I need to do this. I have something to tell and my voice is important. It's that because it is going to be hard. And at the end of the day, work is work. Whether it's your passion, <laughs> whether it's your dream, it is work and it's going to be a slog sometimes. So you have to have something to hold on. I did straight away. So there wasn't kind of a much of a drawn out process with it. Um, another book that I did, um, that was originally published as The Nearness of You. That one, I didn't love that cover. Um, and it was a bit of a struggle, but I, it was my first book and I was just like, cool, do I really like kind of thing. Um, but that evolved, it got republished um, with a new title and 